Julia, and I am the project manager for the intuitive eating course. I'm also the community manager assistant for charge. So if you guys have ever sent an email, you're talking to me. Um, but I'm also a nutritional sciences student at Michigan and, um, I have had a ton of fun developing this course for you guys. It's so, so rewarding and just such an important topic. So I'm super excited to bring it to the charge community. Um, I'll also be in the Slack throughout this journey. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, but today I'm actually here to talk to you about social media and social media and diet culture and just how to navigate that healthy relationship with social media and so you, like having it in your life in a positive way because it is so, so important to the charge community and it really brings us a way to connect with each other, especially as we are all over the country. So we really want to help you have that healthy relationship because as with anything, there are pros and cons, right? There are gonna be things about social media that are so wonderful and that really do connect to all of us, but there are also things that are harmful. And in order to have that really healthy relationship, you wanna be able to assess both sides of that coin. Um, so let's talk about it. You know, like what are some of the really helpful parts of social media? I mean, it helps us feel supported. There's so many people in the church community that are able to connect across the country with different members and chapters. And social media just provides us that platform, right? Like, that's unlike anything else. Um, it's also just, like, really entertaining and funny. There are so many videos on the internet that I watch, and I'm like, thank, thank you so much for creating this content. This is fantastic. Um, and especially when you're bored at home, like, this past year, for instance, social media has really been an outlet for people to just be hilarious. Um, and also, it's an outlet for creativity, right? So many people share the different things that they're making, clothes they're creating, you know, pictures they're painting. So many different outlets for creativity can be shared on social media, and that's so cool. It also is just a great educational resources. Like, I mean, talk about recipes, travel tips, so many different things that people share on social media where you're able to really understand a little bit deeper from somebody who's already done it. Like, that's incredible that there's this platform for that. Um, social media also just creates some really important social awareness and empathy. And in this past year, having this platform, this space to do that, so important. But as with anything, there are other sides of that coin that we do want to talk about. So, I mean, some of the harmful things of social media, I don't think it's a secret that when you go on social media, you see a lot of posts um, of other people and different, you know, thin fit idealized bodies and we waste our time just comparing we just sit ourselves sit down and think about all the different things that you didn't do that day you know you compare what you ate what you did to move your body and it's just really creates this platform for diet culture so there's all these different unrealistic expectations of what you should be doing and how you should be moving through the world and it's just really really hard because people go on social media and they have all these advice columns right and it really replaces our ability to make decisions for ourselves and for our own bodies and what we want our day to look like that day and it's just really difficult because some of these people have absolutely no criteria to be providing this advice but they have this platform on social media where they're able to reach thousands and sometimes millions of followers and make these blanket statements. And it's, it's challenging, I'll admit it, to understand who has authority, especially during this past year, to tell you information. And especially when it comes to food and movement, it's really, really hard because so many people think that they do have that authority. So there are, again, some harmful aspects of social media. But as with anything with intuitive eating and our relationship with food movement, we also want to have a similar relationship with social media in terms of balance. So we just want to think about consciously choosing to have something in our life because it makes us feel better. So social media should make you feel good. It should be something that you enjoy doing because it provides you that joy. And in order to get to that place, we really need to reflect like, what am I viewing and how do I feel when I view that? So we have a little activity for you guys. Um, it could be on your charge Instagram. It could be on your personal Instagram. Either way, I'd recommend both. Uh, but pull out your phone and just honestly scroll through like the first like 15, 20 photos and literally mentally think after each photo, how do I feel when I see this? What am I seeing? What kind of bodies am I seeing? And just determine if this falls into the pro category of social media that we were talking about earlier or the con side of social media we were talking about earlier. So like on every picture, like stop, consciously think, is this making me feel better? Am I getting some sort of connection with this? You know, is this entertaining? Is this funny? Did I learn something from this? Is this something that I want to have in my life? 
or is it on the con side? How do I feel after viewing this content? Am I comparing myself to the person or the idea in this content? Why did someone post this? Were they trying to get me to buy something? Consciously think about that in the first 15 to 20 random photos that you think because social media really shouldn't be something that makes you feel bad. You shouldn't have it in your life if you are constantly comparing yourselves to what you see in your Instagram feed because that doesn't make you feel good and it's social media is a choice. It's something that we choose to have. So why would we choose to have something in our life that isn't benefiting us? It isn't serving us. We want to be conscious consumers of what we give our attention to and we want to make sure we're giving our attention to things that bring us joy and bring us all those pros of social media because there are so many great things of social media. And I know that I notice those things not being in my life when I don't have it. So again, focusing on what social media does for you, not what it does to you. And when you're thinking about all these different cons of social media, and maybe you do have, you know, different people on your feed who are not making you feel good. I want you to stop and think what's stopping me from unfollowing this account. And it can be really hard because sometimes the, you know, con sides of social media might be from your friends and family. But I mean, I personally have unfollowed accounts, even if it is one of my really good friends, you know, maybe from high school, even like one of my really good friends now, if I don't feel good, because that is what's a priority to me is feeling good about what I'm seeing. So if somebody isn't making you feel good, even if you do know them personally, it's okay to unfollow them. It's okay to just not have that in your life and see that every day. That's not anyone's business. That's just what you need to do for you and your mental health. So taking that step to unfollow those accounts can be so, so powerful. So I hope you enjoyed that little activity and you were able to really reflect upon how you feel every single time that you're looking at your social media feeds because it can just be so, so important to, again, take a step back, think about what are my emotions right now, checking in with yourself because that's how you really understand where something fits in your life. And we're gonna dig all into this, into the course, um, with specifically relating to food and movement. But um, right now we just wanted to give you this little mini video about social media because it's just such a big, important part of all of our lives in our young 20s, like so many people are on it. And um, in order to have a healthy relationship with it, you really do have to spend that time with yourself reflecting. So we do have a couple tips too. Um, well, first we just want to think about like, have you ever done a detox? Have you ever really consciously tried to take a step back and really not go on it for a certain um, like amount of time? And then how did that go? So, you know, let's say you tried to do it, you thought about it and you're like, oh yeah, maybe this week I won't go on it. And then by Tuesday you did. Think about why, what was causing you to log onto your social media when you thought, mm, maybe I won't this time. You know, what were you feeling? Were you bored or were you maybe a little anxious or did something happen that really prompted you to go on social media. Um, another tip is just to really schedule time for using it and schedule time for not using it. So if you're not ready to give it all up, that's totally fine, very understandable. Not ready to take a break, we get it. But maybe you wanna schedule just some time, especially in this virtual education that we are all getting right now. Uh, maybe from like 10 to four when you're in classes, you're like, yeah, I'm just not gonna go on it from you know these hours during the day. Or maybe you wanna schedule some time in there to go on it. Maybe you know before you eat lunch, you're like, yeah, I think I'm gonna go on for like 10, 15 minutes just to check in. So scheduling that time can be super, super helpful to be, again, just being a conscious consumer about what you're spending your time and energy on. And then just really reflecting when you are using social media and when you're scrolling through, just pause and ask yourself every once in a while, how do I feel when I'm doing this content? Like, does this make me feel good? And then if it doesn't, let's think about why are you still following them? Why are you still putting something in your life that doesn't make you feel good? And going along with that, uh, we also want you to think about why you're posting. So when you post on social media, you can honestly do the same exercise, check in with yourself and say, why am I posting this? Is it creating content that is gonna help others feel good? Is it sharing connection? Maybe it's something that happened in your life. Maybe you're posting a graduation picture and you wanna share that with the world. That's awesome. Maybe you're posting a recipe that you loved and you wanna share that with the world. That's great. But really checking in with yourself on like why you're posting this and how you think it's gonna make you feel. So if you're posting this and you're excited to see how many people are gonna like and comment at it, maybe think about that a little bit. And then our final tip is just really thinking about who's in your feed. So especially over these next six weeks, 
Let's think about filling your feed with people who are gonna make you feel good about your body, who are gonna make you feel good about the decisions you're making. There are so many great accounts out there and we actually have a little resource here too um, to help you find those great accounts because there's so many, I mean, not only just like intuitive eating professionals, but there are a lot of people who are practicing this every day and just seeing their inspiration being filled with joy every time you open a social media app. Like, just think about how that would feel if every time you open your social media, you log in and your, your feed is just filled with accounts that are inspiring you. So we really encourage you to do that over the next six weeks. And again, feel free to reach out if you have any questions regarding any of the information. I mean, this is just my personal experience too. I'm by no means an expert, um, but I will be in the Slack. So I would love to chat with you guys. And again, we're so, so excited for you and your journey over the next six weeks. So bye guys.